Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Arkin SH4 Gen 2. This is a ruggedized optic that comes in at a very fair price point. We're going to be checking this thing out, going over some of the specs with you, and uh, give you a few of our opinions on it. Uh, we're running this one on a SCAR 20S, and right now we're running Federal Gold Medal Match 175 grain ammunition. Uh, I like the SCARs. These things are neat. But the SCAR is also a great platform for testing out optics because this huge reciprocating chunk of mass right here that is the bolt carrier on the SCAR is kind of a freak of nature. So uh, why not uh, subject this thing to the worst possible punishment that we can? All right. And I'm going to shoot out to 277 right now. That's as far as we've got on the range here. I'm going to dial up to 0.8 mils. Okie dokie, grasshopper. Give it a try. All right, right now we got it on about 12 power. Uh, this one is a 6 to 24. All right, so we're about you know, roughly halfway up here. Okay. The eight inch target. Gopher. Ooh, just off the side of the gopher there. Oh, buddy. These scars are something else. I really do like them. So this particular optic, one of the cool things about it is actually designed by a former Navy SEAL, and this company is veteran-owned and operated. Uh, so I think that's really cool. You know, talking a little bit uh, to the owner, you know, obviously a lot of experience behind precision rifles and things like that. And one of the reasons that he developed this particular optic, not only did he want an optic that was built to his exacting specifications uh, based on his experience, uh, you know, as a sniper, but also wanted it to come in at a very fair price point that average people could afford. You're talking a sub $500 optic. So that's a really tall, you know, tall order, right? When we get into the features that are built into this optic and the, the performance that they boast out of this, uh, that's certainly a tall order. We do have an illuminated reticle on this particular model. Uh, we have adjustable parallax on this. Of course, now we've got it set to three because that's about the distance that we're shooting. You've got very tactile adjustments, one-tenth mil adjustments, which is pretty standard fare for an optic uh, of this type. You do have zero stop turrets, so we do have our zero stop uh, set up, so I can always just return back to zero and shoot 100 if I want. Now, we're not dialed up very far because we're not shooting super far, um, but that is one of the features. Uh, also, there's a lot of great accessories that this optic comes with. We've got our level bubble over here mounted so we can keep the rifle nice and level. Uh, when you get out to longer range, that can certainly be an issue. You want to make sure the gun's level. All right. Also, this handy little lever right here for adjusting the magnification. Um, if it's adverse weather conditions or let's just say, you know, maybe you're wearing gloves or something, it's just handy to have that little lever to be able to get a much more uh, discernible grip and uh, turn that, folk, uh, that knob there to adjust your uh, magnification. 34 millimeter tube. Arkin is also making their own bases and two-piece mounts. Uh, this particular one is the one-piece mount version. Uh, this one, and I'm going to refer to the uh, specifications here, this one's a 6 to 24 50 millimeter bell. So lots of good light gathering. Uh, three and a half inch eye relief on this particular optic. Uh, your field of view at 100 yards on the lowest power setting is 20.88 feet. When you're all the way dialed in, you got 5.22 feet. That just gives you a few ideas on the spec. Um, they make these optics in a couple of different areas. They do have a much higher end version of this optic. This particular one is Chinese made, but they're made exactly to his specifications. Really cool stuff. So um, it's holding up really good. We did perform a tall target test, okay? We did uh, 10 mils at 100 yards, which equates to about 36 inches. So what you do is you, find, you get a tall piece of cardboard or a tall target, and you shoot a group at the bottom, and then you dial up 10 mils, and it should adjust up perfectly 36 inches, and then you shoot another group. That distance should be right at 36 inches. It actually passed a tall target test within a 99 percentile, which is really impressive for an optic in this uh, price range. If you've ever gotten into researching the tall target tests and the box tests and things like that, uh, you'll find that there's actually some pretty famous name brands that do maybe not even that good, which is kind of crazy. You know, any optic company, no matter what, 
are how in, high end, right? Like, I mean, we run a variety of different optics on this channel, but any optic can have a fluke that might not pass a tall target test with as flying a colors as you might would expect, but this one passed within a 99 percentile, which is pretty cool. Um, one distinctive feature that I like, the minute that I pulled this optic out of the box, just something worth looking at, I do like the fact that your adjustments, when you look at these numbers and these, uh, these hash marks and everything, everything's real big and easy to see, right? So if you're in low light conditions or if it's raining or whatever, right, dirt and dust in the air, I do like the fact that you can just really see those adjustments really nicely. They're not small and hard to read. Uh, the reticle on this particular optic, uh, it's their VPR. Um, so it's like their style of a Christmas tree reticle. Um, so you get a ton of windage holds and various information. So if you're shooting within the grid and let's say you're gonna hold versus dialing, right? Uh, right there for the intro, I dialed. But if you were gonna hold, you would have instant feedback, you know, because these guns too, they don't really kick hard enough to where you can't spot your own shot from behind it. So if you squeeze off a shot and you're feeling really confident about it and you, you can get instant feedback on that grid as to how far your windage was off, your elevation, and you can actually just make an instant correction using the grid. So that's kind of one of the nice things about the H59 style of reticle, or in this case, the VPR reticle. So due to his experience as a Navy SEAL sniper, um, that's the reticle style that he prefers is more of that Christmas tree style. And uh, it's really neat. The spotter that Chad is running back here is a Leupold Mark IV spotter, and it actually has a tactical milling reticle built into the spotter. So if your spotter is using a milling reticle, he can give you instant feedback as well. So if he tells you, you know, hey, you missed this far to the right or this high or this low, you can actually apply that correction instantly with this reticle with a good degree of accuracy. That tall target test, one of the things that you're actually checking for with that is the um, accuracy of the reticle it itself, right? If your tall target test is way off, right, then you know that the adjustments or at least the etching on the reticle, the math that's built into the reticle is not right either, right? So when it passed that tall target test, that lets us know that if my spotter gives me a correction, I can use this math within the reticle and be within a 99 percentile of what it's supposed to be, okay? Uh, I wish that we could take it out to longer range today, but we are going to go ahead and uh, shoot a couple of other targets here, have a little fun. Um, and we wanted to use the SCAR just to see if we could, you know, coerce any type of, uh, you know, major issues out of this. Um, really cool stuff. You know, SCARs are, I like these guns a lot. You know, they are a lot of fun. And uh, this one does have the Geisley trigger in it. So, of course, fantastic trigger on this particular rifle. I'm really regretting not buying this gun in the 6.5 Creedmoor, but when I picked this gun up, the 6.5s were not available yet. So I'm probably going to look at rebarreling this uh, particular gun to 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, I don't know who I'm going to use for that yet, but I am going to look into doing that. Um, you know, because I just think the 6.5 is a much better long range cartridge. You know, we have actually shot this particular scar out to 1,000. It was struggling to get out to a grand, it was shooting pretty good at eight. But I don't know, I just feel like a rifle in this class, the 308 is just really not the best cartridge for this particular gun. I feel like the 6.5 Creed would definitely increase our overall standoff distance with this uh, gun. So that's probably something I'm gonna look at doing on this particular setup. But anyway, that's a, that's a future video. We'll, we'll probably revisit that later. But the SCAR definitely does pound the crap out of uh, these things. Now, what we're coming up with for our math, we've got a Kestrel 5700 Elite. This has the link system. We're using this in conjunction with a Terrapin X rangefinder. Now this is a pretty high-end rangefinder. Uh, we got this one through our friends at Brownells. Uh, they sent this one out for us to do some evaluation with. And we are eventually going to do a dedicated video on this pairing because the Kestrel and the Terrapin kind of go together. It actually sends this range data directly to the link on the Kestrel, which is really cool. Super high-tech gear. Um, this is a rather pricey piece of gear, but a very, very nice piece of gear. All right, I'm gonna shoot a little more. I've still got it dialed. Um, we've hit the eight inch target, we've hit the gopher. I'm gonna go for the head on the half size D28 at 277. It's a very small target, probably three, three and a half inches, so relatively small. All right, let's give it a try. I'm gonna dial into full magnification. This is a first focal plane optic, which for an optic that's in this price range, that is absolutely crazy. Generally, a lot of your first focal plane optics usually are the much more expensive optics, 
okay? So um, for it to be first focal plane for sub $500 price range, that's a pretty tall order. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the magnification. All of my math and my dope should be the same no matter what the magnification is. All right. You back there? Yeah, spotter up. Okay. Uh, give it a left hold for wind, just on the edge of the head. Oh, wow. Yeah, wind is drifting it. Give it another uh, three tenths. You got it. Right over the top. In fact. Things accurate, man. I mean, once you know what's going on, that's not bad at all. Decent group on that eight inch over there. Good group on the big plate. We got rounds on the belly on the gopher. I'm gonna load a couple more rounds up here. Um, you know, the, the 20S, just a quick note on this rifle, it does have a relatively thick barrel. Uh, I have noticed that there are replacement barrels that you can get for the SCAR 17 that are 20 inches. But the contour of that barrel, okay, it's a much thinner profile barrel than what's on the 20S. So the 20S does have a nice thick barrel. Um, I've never been a big fan of the 5.56 SCAR, you know, the, the 17, or no, the 16, I'm sorry. Because that barrel's so thin, it kind of whips around a little bit. And there's been some, you know, some people have not been a big fan of the 5.56 version. I think because the 308 version weighs the same as the 5.56, you might as well have the 308 version. That's kind of the way I look at it. And in this particular gun, I can't wait to try one out in 6.5 because you've got a real nice thick barrel with a lot of rigidity. And because the bore size in the 6.5 is so much smaller, it's gonna make that barrel stock that much more rigid than the 308 because you've got a smaller hole in it, which is really nice. Uh, all right, really cool stuff. All right, I'm gonna shoot a couple more rounds. Now we're gonna go for Mr. Gopher. So he's like this big. Uh, down at 277 so uh, really cool setup and uh, we're obviously making sure that our adjustments are looking good and everything like that what I'll do first I'm going to go ahead and dial back down to our zero stop at 100 and I'm going to go ahead and just shoot a quick group at 100 to make sure our zero hasn't walked around on this thing and I'll adjust my parallax back down to 100 really quick tactile adjustment and I'm going to go ahead and lower that magnification just a bit, down to 14 power. I'm one of those weird people when I'm shooting optics. I, I do like to run them on relatively low magnification. I've got a 5.5 power ACOG. I shoot out to 6 on my AR. And I don't have a problem shooting a 4 or 5.5 power optic. But it is nice to have this extra magnification on tap. You know, you start sending a SCAR out to 800 yards. You certainly want to have that, um, that extra magnification to make sure you can see real well to get out there. Reticle's real clear and crisp, uh, very defined. Right out of the box, we didn't really have to do a heck of a lot of adjustment here. Um, all right. All right, so we returned to zero just fine on that. Uh, What's that middle distance, Chad? You said that was... Oh, the uh, railroad size? No, the, the middle plate out there. You said it's like 250? 247. 247. All right, so I'm going to dial this uh, Kestrel down to 247. And it's going to give me a firing solution. All right, it's recommending a 0.8 mil uh, adjustment to get out to 247 yards. I'm going to go to 0.8. I'm going to dial down to 0.7. All right, just a little lower. I'm going to send one in. Ooh, that target's kind of down in the weeds, hiding from me. You're up in the neck area. That's where I'm aiming. All right, good deal. All right, you got a little wind picking up.
Or I'm going to dial up just a bit, go on out with 277. Eight inch popper at 277. Mm -hmm. Gonzo! <laughs> All right, good stuff. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We wanted to give you, you know, kind of a look at this arc in here. We're going to be doing a lot more work with it. I am going to try to rebarrel this scar to 6.5 Creedmoor and do a bit more long range work. Um, I, I think that's really going to realize like the full potential of what this rifle can do. I'm very impressed with this optic. You know, time will tell. We're going to continue beating this thing up on the scar. Uh, once we get this thing rebarreled to 6.5, uh, we'll go out and make another video with it. And I'm going to get a little bit of a round count going on it to give us an idea of how much recoil we've subjected this optic to. Um, right now, we've probably only got about 100 rounds on this optic just between zeroing it and shooting it today and what you saw, saw us shoot on video a little bit. Um, I've been very impressed with this particular rifle. I like it a lot. And I think this Arkin's a great fit. So we'll see how it holds up in the long run. Uh, these things are in stock. They've got them right now. Um, I think they're a great value. And uh, I would encourage you guys to check one out if you're looking for a great tactical optic for a really fair amount of money designed by a former Navy SEAL. Hey, you know, you can't really go wrong there. So, so far, seems to be holding uh, true to what they, you know, said in the design parameters for this thing. So have yourselves a great day. Thank you so much for watching today. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Many more on the way. And we'll see you soon. Big thanks to all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase man cans. Also, go over to Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up a snazzy t-shirt, and support the channel. Thank you very much. See you next time.